What's up guys, it's Paul from Boosted Films coming at you with another how-to video. This one's on installing or removing Evo 8 or 9 seats. This is a pretty simple how-to, but I got a few tips and tricks along the way, and just in my process of documenting most everything I do with my Evo and Evos in this case. I'm going to document taking out some EVO 9 seats from a silver EVO that I bought and putting them into my EVO 8, my black EVO 8. So one of the first things you actually have to do to remove the front seats would be to remove the center console piece, the rear part of it. And to do that, there are two Phillips screws that you'll want to access here. And once you remove those two Phillips screws, there's also two spots where this center console snaps in up closer to where the shifter is where it snaps into that other plastic piece up front so you're gonna have to kind of pull those straight up to release those and if you have an evo with an intercooler sprayer you're going to have the button for the intercooler sprayer in front of the cup holder and you'll want to release that button you should be able to just pull it up otherwise you can pull up the whole center console and then just unplug that wire going to that switch for the intercooler sprayer. And the reason you have to remove this center console piece is because the two screws on the most inside part of the front seats for each side are kind of hidden underneath that piece. So once we have that front center console piece pulled straight up and released in those clips, you should be able to access those bolts holding the front seats down. Next, I'm just going to move the seats all the way back. It's going to make it easier to see the nuts holding the front of the seat rails. And there's just two nuts holding these seat rails down. So we're going to remove both of those. 14 millimeter, I believe. And if you had little plastic clips, you just got to pull the edge. Uh, the, the bolt I'm removing right now potentially had a plastic clip over it. I'm actually going to show it a little bit later but you should be able to just pull the edges of that plastic clip, make it a little wider, and that should pop off. And then you're gonna remove the two bolts holding the rear portion of the seat rails down. And for the passenger seat that we're removing right now, this Evo 8 passenger seat, there's really nothing else. Once you remove those two nuts and two bolts, you should just be able to lift that seat out. And just a forewarning, the seats are a little bit heavy. There is a reason people would remove them if they're trying to take weight out for drag racing. So now we're going to cut over to the silver Evo, to the Evo 9 seats that we're going to be removing, and I'm going to remove the passenger seat from this car. So these are just the Evo 9 seats. You can kind of see the difference. The Evo 8 seats have that blue inner pattern. The Evo 9 seats look what you like what you see here. Uh, the Evo 9 SE seats are kind of more desirable. Those are the ones that have the red stitch kind of around them. And once again, for the passenger seat here, you're just going to remove those two bolts, two nuts, and then you should be able to lift out the seat. And here's a comparison, as I said, just showing the Evo 9 seat on the left, Evo 8 seat on the right. And this is the little cover that I'm talking about, a little plastic cover. A lot of people might not have that on their Evo anymore. It's real easy to lose or misplace, but you just pull the sides and then that should release. So now that we're removing the driver's side Evo 9 seat from this silver Evo, it's gonna come out pretty much the same way as the passenger seat. The only difference is underneath there is a plug-in that you're gonna to have to unplug. And as far as I can tell, that plug-in underneath the seat just goes to where you would put your seatbelt on. And that's basically just a sensor to let the car know that you're wearing your seatbelt when you're driving down the road. So that's what that plug-in underneath the driver's seat is for. So again, same process here two nuts in the front, two bolts in the back. We're gonna remove those, go underneath the seat, unplug that plug that's plugged in, and then you should be able to lift out the seat. Now, if you're following my recent videos about the Silver Evo, you know that it's kind of rusty and that the seat rails followed suit here a little bit. They had a little bit of surface rust on them. Still pretty good overall, but I wanted to clean up that rust a little bit. So I did take the time to sand down these front portions of the seat rails and then just throw a little paint on them. It's nothing too professional, but it's really just meant to make sure that the rust doesn't continue at a rapid rate and just so it looks a little bit nicer with some black paint on it instead of rust. And really one of the most important things when you're doing something like this is just to kind of make sure you tape off the area pretty well 
I'm certainly no professional, but I just took the time to tape off the seat to make sure that any overspray would not actually end up on the seat itself. So here you can see the seat rails a little bit after I did some light sanding on them. So if you're doing this step, I recommend just using some painter's tape and then either some plastic bags or paper bags, something that'll cover a lot of surface area that you can use to cover the seat itself. Cause again, you just wanna make sure you're not gonna get any overspray on the seat. So here we are just putting some spray paint on. Next, we're gonna move to removing the lower portion of the rear seat. And there are two clips underneath the seat You've probably already seen this if you watched my fuel pump install video because this is how you access where the fuel pump is. But there are just two clips back here and you just pull the clip forward and lift up on the seat and the seat will release. Uh, the clips you're pulling are not part of the seat. So you don't want to pull up on the clip itself. You just want to pull that clip and then pull up on the seat separately. And then the bottom portion should come out really easily. Next, we're going to move to the upper portion of the rear seat. And this can be one of the most tricky parts of actually installing it. Removing it's pretty easy. There's gonna be three bolts holding it in place. So I'm gonna show you the one on the passenger side right now. And then I'm gonna move over to the one on the driver's side. Uh, the actual third one is in the middle and it's kind of covered up right now by the seatbelt uh, plugins. But as I begin to remove these two outer bolts holding this back portion of the seat in, uh, you're going to see now that I'm going to show where this third bolt is as well that holds this seat in place. So of course you just got to remove all three of those bolts. And then the trick here, I should have had the camera up a little bit higher, but the trick here is that you're going to want to pull the seat out a little bit from the bottom and then you're going to want to lift up because there are some hooks that kind of hook this in place. And also you're going to want to get both of those seat belts out of the way, especially the ones on the outside. Uh, each outside seatbelt you should be able to kind of move out of the way. You'll grab the seat and then again lift up. And the middle seatbelt you could kind of unbolt that if you needed to but realistically you should be able to get this the top portion of this back seat out just by kind of pulling that seatbelt kind of out of the way and then you should be able to slide the seatbelt over and take it out of the car once you've had it released from those hooks that are kind of hook on the top. And that's where it's kind of tricky reinstalling these. I'm not going to actually show reinstalling all these because it is obviously just kind of the reverse process of this but just really a tip for reinstalling this upper portion of the back seat is having that seat lifted up and then kind of putting some force into it and kind of pushing it back towards the back of the car while you push down and then you should be able to get it on all three of those hooks and you'll know if it's hooked in or not because if you grab the seat by the top and try to pull it forward if it just kind of pulls and flexes forward really easily that means you didn't actually get it into those hooks so this is a portion that was a little bit tricky for me when i first put this back in place that's why here i'm showing you exactly what those hooks look like so you know that's what you want to get the top part of that seat hooked into so it holds it in place properly so that's it for this how-to video, guys. Like I said, it's pretty simple, but just wanted to give you some tips and tricks for doing this. As always, this is Paul from Boosted Films. I appreciate you watching. Any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching.